Anna and in this video I'm going to focus on the book sprints in my 2023 reading journal by author Tal Bauer. Tal Bauer is a well-established name in the MM fiction genre and in my opinion one of the very best. I have listened to all his books that are out in audio and uh, I have read a few that aren't. He never disappoints and I feel like I can pretty much expect a five-star read whenever I start something new by him. Today I am going to show you my spreads for six of his books, my favorites of his, and we are going to start with the Executive Office Trilogy, one of Tal's most famous works and one of my all-time favorite series. This is an awesome roller coaster ride and it kicks off with Enemies of the State. It's an action packed political thriller set in the near future. The year is never mentioned, but 2030 is a reasonable estimate. The main character is the newly elected president of the United States, Jack Spires. You really can't create a character with higher stakes or a higher profile than him. Jack is a widower of 10 years. He was married to a woman and upon settling in the White House, he's sort of lonely and has a hard time adjusting to the lifestyle where he's being guarded and watched 24 seven. He finds a friend in the lead agent in the secret service detail, Ethan Reichenbach, main character number two of the story. Ethan is openly gay and kind of a player, but as he and Jack become friends, he begins to fall for him. He has never met a man like Jack, and eventually these two become involved in a highly clandestine forbidden romance. This book is a wild ride. <laughs> it is White House Down meets uh, Black Hawk Down with a bit of the American president thrown in. You know, that 90s movie with Michael Douglas and Annette Bening. And that's just book one. <laughs> the suspense part of the story involves a rogue black ops unit and stolen nuclear warheads and it's set all over the world. Tal Bauer writes amazing suspense novels. If you haven't read any, I recommend you check them out. Book two in this series is Enemy of My Enemy, where President Jack Spires continue his relationship with Ethan Reichenbach by moving him into the White House as his official gentleman. You can imagine how well that goes down the American president moves in his gay lover. As first gentleman, Ethan is suddenly in charge of all East Wing duties like flower arrangements, tablescapes, state dinners and so on, which is so sweet and funny. He has a lovely staff team to help him with this, fortunately, but parallel to this, he is also secretly recruited by the CIA to run a clandestine task force assigned with hunting down the big, big bad guy of the series. Not gonna say who it is because I don't wanna spoil it for you. This whole series is multiple point of view, meaning we get to step into the head of many characters, big and small, villains as well as heroes, and it's part of what makes the series so interesting. There are actually three couples we get to follow through the whole series, and what they all have in common is the forbidden romance theme. I decided to dedicate one spread each to each of the couple, and this spread features Adam Cooper and Faisal Alsud. Theirs is another complicated romance, possibly even more complicated than Jack and Ethan's. Faisal is a prince of Saudi Arabia and second in line to the Saudi throne and a devout Muslim. 
while Adam is a United States Marine Corps lieutenant who leads Ethan's secret task force on the ground. Yeah, complicated. Adam and Faisal are my uh, personal favorites uh, of all the three couples, and Faisal is possibly my favorite character of the whole series. He is a very complex character. He's chief of Saudi intelligence and not a stranger to harsh interrogation methods, but he's also sharply intelligent and gentle and soft-spoken. He recites Islamic poetry and he is just lovely. Contrary to what you may believe, he doesn't struggle with his sexuality. Instead, he finds comfort in his faith and is convinced he will be judged fairly by Allah when that time comes. Adam, on the other hand, struggles with the relationship a great deal because he knows it can never go anywhere and he has tried to leave Faisal in the past. But whenever he is in trouble, and he gets in a lot of trouble. He ends up running to Faisal and Faisal welcomes him with open arms every time. I think this quote is a good summary of their relationship. This guy recites poetry to you by candlelight and you fuck up his jet and bring him dead bodies. This book is a wild ride and has the best plot twist in the history of plot twists. Darth Vader's got nothing on this. It's set all over the world again and shit goes down everywhere, I kid you not. Just say the word Sochi to a Talbauer fan and watch them implode. The last book in the series is Enemy Within. As the title suggests, there are moles, so many moles. We are deep into the plot and conspiracy of the story now, and I don't want to ruin all the wonderful twists for you, so I can't say very much about it, but I can tell you that the third couple of the series are none other than Sergei Pyukov, president of a post-Putin Russia, and Lieutenant Sasha Andreev, a Russian fighter pilot who dreams of the stars and of becoming a cosmonaut. Some people are put off before going in when they hear that the Russian president is a main character. So let me just address that first and say that Sergei is a wonderful character, very humorous, and uh, he is the president Russia needs and deserves. He's middle-aged, former FSB, has two ex-wives, is currently unmarried and has never considered being with a man before meeting Sasha. Sasha, on the other hand, is the character that struggles the most with his sexuality in this series. We get to witness a lot of internalized homophobia and my heart aches for him. He has had such a tough life and he's such a good person. He deserves so much better than what he has been dealt in the past. Sergei sees this, sees the real him beneath all his layers and armor, and he loves him. A large part of this book is set on board a submarine, so here I used submarine blueprints that I printed and dyed with tea. One of my favorite scenes of the whole series is set on board uh, this submarine, the USS Honolulu. The captain of the sub, Anderson, that is transporting Ethan and Jack, tells them a story of his teenage son, who started to act out, become depressed, and shut himself away. And when Anderson went to check on him, he would find him crying in his room. Then last Christmas, when Jack and Ethan made headlines because of their relationship, he found his son with a picture from a newspaper he had cut out of the two of them dancing at the White House Christmas dinner. When he saw it, his son became upset and tried to hide it. And eventually he broke down and told his dad he was gay. 
This completely transformed their relationship and the two are now very close. His son is doing well and uh, emails his dad every day about his life and about the boy he wants to ask to prom. And it was Ethan and Jack who made this happen with their openness. Captain Anderson is immensely grateful to them for this. This scene always makes me cry, it's so beautiful. I highly recommend this whole series. The audios clock in at about 15 to 20 hours each, so if you are up for that, give it a try. And if you're not, I, I say just go for it anyway. Now to another series by Tal Bauer, The Executive Power Geology. It's a spin-off to the previous Executive Office series. Book one, Ascendant, picks up right where Enemy Within ends. And uh, this book is about Sergei, President of Russia, and his uh, Sasha. This book is very different from the others. It's, it's more introspective and spiritual. Sergei is working on rebuilding Russia after the events in the previous series, and Sasha goes on an inner spiritual journey to come to terms with himself, his sexuality, and his past, so he can truly be with Sergei before he leaves for the United States to start training at NASA to be an astronaut or cosmonaut, which is his dream. This book is also a lot shorter than all the other Tal Bauer books I read, and uh, it's not out in audio, but it's a quick read. The second book, Stars, however, is Another long, action-packed thriller in Tal's typical style. It picks up two years after Ascendant, where Sasha is at NASA training to be an astronaut. This is one of my very favorite Tal Bauer books. It's beautiful and poetic, but also has so, so much suspense. We also get to revisit with Jack and Ethan, who makes an appearance and are an important part of this story. This one crosses over into sci-fi a bit because Space zombies. Yeah, I'm not gonna say any more about it because I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say that if all the space movies out there has taught us anything, it is to never ever bring that fascinating unknown thing you just found on an abandoned planet or spaceship aboard your own ship. And for some reason, NASA didn't get that memo. Yeah, let's just say, Houston, we have a big fucking problem up here. So far, there are only two books in this series. I wholeheartedly hope there will be more, because I'm not ready to say goodbye to all these amazing characters yet. I know Tal has planned two books which focus on Faisal and Adam, called Sand and Blood but they are currently on ice uh, due to the amount of complex research that has to go into writing their story. But hope springs eternal, so I think we will meet these guys again. The next book I'm going to talk about is Hush, a standalone novel that is not related to the executive office or power universe. It is set in present-day Washington, D.C., which means sometime before 2017 when this book was published. The main character is Tom Brewer, a fed federal judge in his late 40s. He has been deep in the closet since college and hasn't dated for over 20 years due to some homophobic remarks one of his college professors had. 
Enter Mike Luciano, his openly gay U.S. Marshal. The first half of this book is pure romance. We get to watch these two fall in love and start a relationship. About midway through, there is a dramatic turn of event events, which Nance Tom as the preceding judge of the most high profile court case in American history, which means he's going to need Mike's protection more than ever. Not gonna say too much more about that because I don't want to spoil it, but this ride gets action-packed and bumpy and is full of twists and turns and snakes. Lots and lots of rattlesnakes. I included Mike's best friend, Chris Caldera, here as well, who gets the Best Side Character Award. I'm going to focus a bit on Chris here, who has his own book called Whisper. Hush, Whisper, get it? Whenever I post pictures of my reading journal spreads in Tal Bauer's groups, people ask me, are you going to do Whisper? Are you going to do Whisper? And the honest answer is probably not. It's just too emotional and difficult. But I do feel I have to say a word or ten about this book as well. Whisper is also a standalone novel, but at the same time it's sort of vaguely related to Hush. You can read one without reading the other, but to get the most of the overall experience, I recommend you read Hush and then Whisper, in that order. Whisper is generally acknowledged to be Tal's masterpiece, his magnus opus. In Hush, we learn that Chris is a widower and that his is not a happy story. In Whisper, we travel back all the way to September 2001, when Chris is fresh out of college and recruited into the CIA due to his extensive knowledge in Middle Eastern languages, including Dari and various dialects. And we all know what comes next, September 11, 2001. A week after that, Chris is on the ground in Afghanistan with the very, very first US Marine Corps team there to establish contact with Afghan warlords and form alliances in preparation for the US invasion of uh, Afghanistan. Enter David Haddad, US Marine Corps medic, a Libyan, American, Muslim and gay. We get to follow these two over the course of almost 15 years. 900 and 50 pages and almost 27 hours of audio and the novel delves deep into the wars following 9-11. I would call it military fiction more than anything else and the research Tal put into this book is astounding. Tal has a way of letting you see things play out from all sides and in this book, we get to step into the head of a person slowly being radicalized. Whisper is a difficult angst feast, but trust me when I say it does eventually have a happy end. If you have read Hush, you know Chris is a widower, but if you read the blurb on the back of Whisper, you also know David isn't really dead. So that's it for the six Tal Bauer books in my 2023 journal and a bit about Whisper as a bonus. I highly recommend all of these books, perhaps Whisper most of all. Just go read them now. The audios can be found on Storytel and Everend uh, as well as Audible and the books can be downloaded for Kindle from Amazon. And I'm sure your local bookshop can wrangle up a copy as well if you ask them to order it. Happy reading all of you and thanks for watching.